At least two times I've advertised some projects I'd like to share with you about audio over IP and other cool stuff. But I fear I have to postpone them again as several cool things happened the past weeks. I had some really nice conversations with some of you in the comments and by email. And some of these conversations ended in a physical face-to-face -face meeting that I've really enjoyed. The professional audio world seems to be quite small and more by coincidence I got in touch with the developer team of Behringer over one of these connections. And they made a nice gift for the open source world. With the Wing audio console, Behringer introduced another nice digital audio connection in 2019, Stage Connect. In one of the first videos on YouTube about the Wing, the Behringer guys gave some information about this new connection. It uses an automotive chipset to transmit up to 32 uncompressed audio channels. And these channels can be configured as input or output. So the user can decide if 32 input or output channels or any combination should be active. A couple of weeks ago, I had a very nice meeting with another YouTuber from yet another electronics channel. Check out his channel if you like to learn more about high quality digital audio systems and how they can be controlled. I already learned a lot from his videos. He suspected a special chip made by analog devices behind this stage connect. Looking around the website of analog devices, we can find some more information here. The Automotive Audio Bus, or in short A2B, is advertised to support multiple audio channels using the AD242 family of the enhanced A2B transceivers. It offers a high bandwidth digital bus with 50 megabits and supports up to 32 individual channels. With the latency of only two audio samples, it would fit into the design of the Behringer system with only a couple of samples in total latency. The other specs in the datasheet are looking promising as well. Data, control, clock and power on a single wire pair hmm, would fit to Stage Connect that uses a regular microphone or DMX512 cable. So I spent the advertisement money from the last YouTube videos and bought an evaluation board from Analog Devices using the AD2428 chip. These boards are pretty expensive with around 400 to 500 euro but with the AD2428 Mini, I found a more affordable board with only around 130 euro. So I measured the voltage on the XLR connectors of the wing and hooked up an XLR plug to the connectors of the board. And the wing showed a promising reaction. But not exactly what I was hoping for. The connection lasts only for a couple of seconds and then some kind of reset seems to restart the connection. Obviously, something was missing here. And of course, the analog devices page told us something about data, control, clock and power. So looking into the reference manual of the AD242X, we can see that the device tries to establish an I2C connection once an A2B device is connected. It routes external I2C messages from the primary A2B device to an external I2C device on our subordinated evaluation board. My board has a dedicated I2C EEPROM, but obviously the EEPROM does not have the expected content or maybe the address of the EEPROM is wrong. And now the meeting with one of you comes into play again. Behringer advertises with the slogan, we hear you, and they answered. In the already mentioned video about the wing, the Behringer guys thought about opening Stage Connect. So I asked if they are still planning to release more information about this type of connection. And guess what? They discussed this and sent me the Stage Connect API together with some documentation to implement Stage Connect devices as primary and subordinated devices. This API came together with a very kind permission to publish the codes, and here it is Stage Connect is open source now. Looking through this code, we can see that Stage Connect uses the superimposed I2C channel to communicate between primary and secondary devices. It uses a C-struct to define the device properties like amount of input and output channels, TDM configuration of the A2B chip and much more. Since the recent firmware release of the Wing, the P24 is receiving channel names and we can see that this is done using a mailbox system with ASCII characters. Pretty nice and easy to use. So let's try to define a very simple device using the evaluation board and this API information. The API uses a communication class wrapper to communicate with the I2C interface. So first we have to implement a wrapper class to use these functions. 
This includes the constructor and destructor as well as the functions reset, i2c write and read for single bytes as well as whole arrays. Finally, we can initialize the i2c bus of the SAMD21 on my Vidor 4000 board I've already used in the previous projects. The most important thing is to deliver data over i2c when the primary A2B device, this wing here, requests new data. As I2C has a strictly top-down structure, we have to react to read and write actions of the wing. So we can implement the wire on receive and wire on request callbacks of the Arduino framework to receive and send new data via I2C. From the API documentation we can see that the wing expects an I2C device at address OX3D, which explains why my onboard I2C EEPROM was not enough, because this address was at 50. Let's compile and see what happens. but the wing still shows a black box. Well, it took me a while to understand that on my specific microcontroller, the on request events are called right before the on receive events, which is really bad. We should receive the I2C read address before we send any data back to the requesting device, but looking at the GitHub repository of the SAMD offered a bug in the I2C implementation of the Arduino board support package. Oh man, luckily this is not the only microcontroller I have here, so let's try a Raspberry Pi Pico and see if this is working. Yep, that's looking much better now. The wing recognizes a P24 with 16 inputs and 16 outputs. <laughs> Maybe some of you are interested to use this type of connection as well, so I spent some time to write a wrapper class around the StageConnect API. I published it as an easy to use Arduino library. Now you can simply check out this library, create a new instance of StageConnect, initialize the wire library and start the StageConnect system. I implemented a quite convenient way to configure the A2B node using the constructor of the library class. So in the end, you should be able to create a StageConnect node with only five lines of code using any Arduino controller of your choice now. Okay, now that the control layer is working, what should we do with the system now? Right, of course, implement StageConnect for the X32. Did you expect anything else? As A2B evaluation boards accept two TDM16 audio streams, but the X32 sends four TDM8 streams, we have to implement a small converter device for this. Luckily, I put some spare pin headers on my XFBABE expansion card from last year. It should be possible to convert the TDM8 channels to TDM16 using the onboard FPGA. Output two streams to the spare header pins and hook up the A2B evaluation board to both. The Raspberry Pi Pico will then still act as the I2C device as the bug on the SAMD21 is still present. Within the FPGA, we receive four TDM8 channels as 24 bit vectors with a sample rate of 48 kHz. I put these bit vectors into two 16 channel TDM senders with doubled clock rate compared to TDM8. The clock for the sending are taken from the A2B evaluation board. Maybe I should place some kind of rate conversions here, but for the proof of concept this should be fine. Let's compile this bitstream, load it to the SAMD21 and check if we can send 32 channels to the wing.
To test the connection with my X32, I will use my XF Babe card, the DIY expansion card, and connect it to the wing via stage connect. And to test this, I do not have any USB connection on my uh, X32 anymore because <laughs> the XF Babe card has no USB connection at the moment. So I will connect the wing to my computer and send from Cubase 32 audio streams to the wing. The wing itself is connected to my X32 via AS50 and I will reroute the AS50 ports to the card outputs and the expansion card is connected via stage connect to my wing so we can check if all 32 channels are working. So let's reroute both consoles and connect the computer. Okay, so let's first check if the wing is working and AS50 port A is connected to the wing. And yeah, we can see that all 48 inputs from the wing are here on the X32. So we have to reroute our card inputs to AS50 port one to 32. So let's reroute the wing. Here on the wing, I will route the USB audio to the AS50 port A that is connected to the X32. The stage connect inputs are not routed to a specific destination. We will just use the integrated level meters of the wing. To test the order of all channels, I'm using a test sine wave signal generated by Goldwave. I place this signal on each of the 32 channels and if everything is working fine, we should see a nice running light on the level meters. So let's check the connection from Cubase to the wing and to the X32 via AS50 first. And well, yeah, that's looking fine and the signals are within the X32. And looking at the stage connect input levels on the wing, <laughs> yes, the X32 has learned stage connect. Okay, that actually works pretty well. If you have some ideas what we can do with this powerful new connection, please let me know fork the repository from GitHub, tinker around and try to find new use cases. I'm pretty sure you have some quite good ideas. If you like, send some pull requests or create some cool stuff by your own and tell us about your projects. Many thanks to Behringer for the very kind permission to publish the API and the source code. But please don't write to them about errors in the library. If there are any, I caused them. That's it for today and see you next time. Some cool stuff has happened around the open source operating system for the X32, so stay tuned. <laughs>